Hartshead Pike is a hill in Thameside in Greater Manchester and its name is associated with a monument on its summit. It overlooks Aston Underline, Mossley, Saddleworth, Lees and Oldham. On a clear day you can get views of Manchester, Cheshire and Snowdonia in Wales. Hartshead Pike Tower has been a Grade 2 listed building since 1967. During the Roman occupation of Britain, a warning beacon for local garrisons, possibly lit during times of unrest, may have been sighted on Hartshead Pike. Local trackways were routes for Romans to access a Roman road at Limeside. The name refers to the hill and the tower. The tower is not on the highest point of the hill, but its prominent position, 940 feet above sea level, has been the site of the beacon or signalling station from early times and may have been the site of a beacon in the late 16th century. Just at the bottom of the hill is the A670. Today I've come to meet up with a witness to a cryptid that has been stalking this area. Along with the witness account, there have been another report of something growling at someone near the pike. And as far as two miles away, another report of a young couple being growled at from within a wooded area. Um, we were walking about 2004. Basically, we had no camera phones back then. It was just Nokia's 3330s. I want to go a good picture either. It wasn't late, but it wasn't early. It, it was like roughly about, I say before midnight, sort. All right. Yeah. yeah. So it was at night time when I saw the. Yeah. So it was dark. Yeah. The weather, what was that like? Clear sky like now. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you see. See it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't get no funny smell. I just got this feeling that I was being watched. Well, obviously, because I seen it, I was just being watched. Well, I got no smell, nothing like that. Yeah, I got eye shine, red. I'll never forget. There's something I can never forget. Like, that's planted in my head now for the rest of my life. That's it. I did research trying to find it, and nothing, not with that sort of eye shine. It was four foot from the ground to its eyes, and roughly about six foot from snout to tail. Right, right. And you first thought, I just thought it was an over grown dog but then it's when it looked its eyes that sort then i thought right this is no dog this this is something else but that yeah i don't see that's one thing i never see unless you take a photo of them but they've got to be worth looping a certain way yeah but for that light this was just full-blown yeah eye shine like they were just glowing and looking around here, there's no um, lamp, is there, that's going to light up the place? No. Apart from a few there, but they're just light up the road there. Yeah. This is just completely black. These are fairly new, though. Yeah. Because it would have been uh, the sodium light. Yeah, that's there. right. They've got old fashioned yellow ones. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw it roughly about where the big wall is now. Coming down, at first, like you said, I thought it was an oversized, I thought it was a dog at first or something else, but then I thought, right, there's no cows, cut in, nothing, then it's just, so I just carried on walking and I thought, hold on, nah, red eyes, and it just stood out, then I thought, that, that ain't no dog, when does a dog have, I thought to myself, right, when does a dog have red eyes, they don't, do they, not in this country, well, not in the world, so I just carried on walking, but then, what intrigued me the most is when we got the eye contact, we made full-blown eye contact. And with that eye contact, even though it was, might just been a minute or so, but it felt like a lifetime. So I thought, oh, Jesus, what do I do? So I carried on walking. I thought, right, just go with my gut, just keep on walking. But then we kept, I kept eye shine on it, kept, not eye shine, so I kept eye contact. Then, uh, then I got closer and I thought, wow, it looks like a wolf. But then I thought, can't be no wolves in this country. But then it just, it's just blown me away, basically. Because I thought, there's no wolves in this country, especially when Manchester's only 15 minutes that way and my own town centre of Ashton Underlines there. So I thought, right, but 
But then, so I kind of, so as I walked, as you can see, I walked up here, and that's where it was, right where the fencing is. So I got past the fence, looked back, it would disappear like it was never here. No, because I was panicking at the time. So I thought, I thought, wow, this is it, I'm a goners. This thing could just kill me, and nobody will never know I'm. I just go on the missing person list. It's the only way I can put it, say, yeah. <laughs> say it really. It looked like, American we like the American Werewolf in London version, but where the American Werewolf in London had grey fur and quite long fur, this were all black with short fur, but it had like a, sn the snout was a bit crushed up a little bit. So I don't know, like a chow face, I don't, I can't. and he didn't have big ears either, they were like short ears. But then I thought, is it a big cat? But it was too big to be a big cat. Yeah. It was far too big. Yeah. Variant two, variant two type two dogman. Yeah. Of um, Vic Cundiff. Yep. Yeah. yeah. What I've heard stories of in the late sixties, the seventies, on the other side of Arthur Pike here now is an old chapel. So the I've heard stories that people are doing devil worshippers like cults and stuff like that. So can you have opened summer? I don't know. Was it a hellhound I seen? Was it the church grim? I have no idea. Like Delamere, apparently yeah. there's a lot of stories there that there's cults in Delamere, and yet these creatures have been reported in Delamere. Yeah. That's it, and I believe that farmers keep it quiet. Yeah. Just obviously they they got people with horses on here, they just keep it hush hush really. That, I don't know, I could be wrong, but it's either that or someone's got a zoo up here full of wolves. And they're like, what do you mean? I went, well, that's the only way I can explain what I saw. That's the only way I can explain what I saw was a wolf type creature. Well, the variant too. But now, it's just mad that I see people here now walking, knowing that there's something here. Well, that creature might have died because it was that long ago. I don't know how long these creatures can live for. That's it, so who says it could have offsprings and they're just grown up and they'll learn to adapt and hide from people. Yeah. But right, some people say it changed your life. It has really, yeah. It's Before all this, before I had that encounter, I would have, I would have laughed myself. Of course I was, I would have laughed. A young lad, I thought, yeah, right, there's no such things. But now, my mind's completely open to everything. So I was walking down here, so the next minute, that's when it, I saw something in the field to the left of me, here, and I thought, that's an oversized, I thought, wow, that's big. But then that's when I seen the eye shine, and, the, and they were red, absolutely red. And I thought, wow, that ain't no oversized dog. That's got to be some sort of, I don't know, another, who knows. So we carried on walking down, making eye contact now. So where I am here now, I'm making full blown eye contact with it. I thought, wow, I'm a goners. I'm an absolute goners here now. So I thought, right, keep on walking. So I did. So now this is where I lost it a little bit. So I'm walking up here now, panicking, heart going 100 mile an hour. So as I turned there, and that's where I saw the back end of it. I thought, wow, this is no dog. This is a wolf type creature. So I just carried on what I thought. I got to go with my gut, keep on walking. I thought, if it's gonna get me, it's gonna get me. Nobody's never gonna know I was here. So I just keep on walking, just kept going. Not even look back then. So far up to where your car is, I looked back, it was gone like it was never there. And the, the relief that I got was just, unbelievable like big pressure in the atmosphere is just gone so basically it's like Phew. so you felt that pressure as you were walking yeah i felt i thought i had the pressure of thought being like am i its next meal sort of thing thought am i going to be its next victim so but then when i see it disappear well not see it disappear but look back and it gone that's when the pressure around me just disappears and it's like wow so as I got a bit further up I took my breath and thought Jesus what the hell was that scratching me I'm thinking I need to get out of here then obviously a few 
months after it, I had nightmares thinking that still stuck in my head, thinking, what is it? What is it? And now as I got older, started researching, now I'm starting to become a team member with my own team. So now I'm starting to research things myself now into the world of cryptozoology to get answers for, get answers to basically what's out here in the, country, in the countryside of the UK. As people don't, don't realise, they haven't got the sight to clear what is out here. But we do know, we do know, and if you did know, you never visit the countryside, you never visit the woods ever again. You just go in your homes, lock the front, the front door and never be seen again. You'll never come out, you'll never visit. So have you got a Facebook group people can go to? Yeah. What's the name of that? Um, Dogman Encounters Outlaws. It's just for people to have open mind like yourself and myself to have a chat. Just be open, just basically just get your information out there to encourage people to come forward to your to, to everyone about these cryptids. I don't want people to think if they had sightings of these creatures and they're, they're isolated because they've got nobody to talk to when they've got all us lot, a community of cryptid researchers into the paranormal, the supernatural, where they can just open up and feel at home sort of thing. And that's how we that's we how we all want people to feel, we just don't want them to be isolated. Mm-hmm. <laughs>